There we got go. it. Yeah, now screen share. Okay. Um, okay. What the? Sorry, this is, yes, that's not what I wanted. I wanted that. Technical difficult. I just had the right window open. I just had it open. Okay. So welcome everyone to today's meeting of the Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance SIG. We are honored today to welcome Gary Store and April Harrison of Chain Yards Trust Your Supplier Platform. They're going to be talking about using Trust Your Supplier to manage partnerships and data. If you look at the agenda on the website, we also have information in their white paper. Before I hand it over to Gary, I, in April, I want to remind everyone that Hyperledger um, is committed to creating a safe and welcoming community for all. We have the Hyperledger Code of Conduct uh, available from the meeting agenda page, and then also our antitrust policy, because this is an open meeting, everyone attending. Please be mindful of not sharing any proprietary data or any non-public data, um, as we want to be compliant with the Linux Foundation's antitrust policy. Okay, I think those are the um, beginning housekeeping items. There are a couple of SIG items that we'll be going over at the end of the meeting. But we wanted to take it to um, optimize our time with Gary and April. So let me, I'm going to stop screen sharing now and hand it over to Gary and April. Do you have your slide? Yeah, and I'm sharing right now, uh, Alicia. So um, excellent. Everyone, if you could let me know that you're I seeing. can see it. Okay, you should see a kind of a welcome screen. So Hello, everyone. Uh, again, thank you, Alicia. My name is Gary Storm. I'm with um, Trust Your Supplier. Trust Your Supplier is a, a blockchain-based platform running on Hyperledger uh, on the IBM cloud. And um, its role in life is to connect large enterprises with their supplier community uh, over that blockchain using, um, using our SaaS platform and microservices um, to bring information about suppliers um, to those enterprises and ultimately to whom are our, our, our customers. And so um, I want to talk to you a little bit about that today and how we, um, you know, how we uh, landed on this use case and decided to use uh, a blockchain platform for our solution and uh, how it is driving benefits to uh, both uh, enterprise organizations and their supplier bases around the world. Okay. So if you have any I guess we're going to hold questions to the end, Alicia, or are we having them as we go? How do you want to do that? Um, which works better for you? Either one. I mean, I'm always happy to answer a question if you have it in real time. It, it seems to me more tactical. So okay. I guess feel free to interrupt if you've got uh, you got a question or just want to make a comment. Great. So if anyone has questions, please please speak up. For those of you who aren't comfortable speaking, if you put it in the chat, I'll read them aloud for Gary. Got it. Okay, awesome. So. Um, so if we think about um, the world today, uh, we've we've gone through uh, a host of changes in all of our lives, both professional and personal, over the course of the last three or four years. And really, it's manifested itself into uh, a changing landscape for uh, corporate relationships and business partnerships. Um, and that really manifests itself in, in supplier visibility. So the pandemic brought that out, obviously. Uh, we have geopolitical issues. We have many, um, uh, you know, we have a poly crisis, and I think that's real. Um, and so, uh, without getting too much into into that level of information and detail, um, there is a heightened um, awareness and heightened need uh, for supplier information for organizations to do business today. Um, so, in the old days, being four years ago, um, enterprise organizations are primarily interested in whether um, their supplier organizations were going to be financially viable over the long term. And that was it. Now they're concerned about you know, adverse media and reputational risk and 
um, compliance issues around modern slavery and supply chain due diligence. They're concerned about sustainability and resiliency and uh, social awareness and diversity. There's a whole host of issues um, that is growing and expanding every day, uh, which makes the challenge makes it challenging to continue to have effective partnerships that um, are productive with um, with with an enterprise's supplier constituency. So enter trust your supplier. Trust your supplier to aims to um, address some of those challenges by providing a platform in which information, risk information particularly, but any information about a supplier uh, can be housed in a, in a network fashion, in this case on a blockchain, and uh, shared amongst um, the, the, those suppliers, customers in a very efficient and effective way. So really it's about creating trust. And we all know that blockchain's uh, you know, kind of principle, um, uh, predominant principle is trust. And so that's featured obviously in our name and what we feel is very important, right? There needs to be trust between two business partners. And we, we help to um, embody that trust through the sharing of information. Also, obviously we wanna be able to create value. There's, you know, there's value in information today, uh, data being our greatest resource. I think that's been, uh, <laughs> been kind of well chronicled over the last few years. And so we try to provide data and information that are, helps um, drive relationships, drive decision making, and drive value back to the organizations um, that we do business with, um, and we do that through innovative partnerships. Uh, and and sometimes the relationship that we have with our customers and our suppliers on our network uh, are um, uh, relationships that they just haven't had before. Right? Uh, it's not a simple, um, uh, you know, a simple transactional relationship. Now the relationships need to be much tighter because as an enterprise, you need to understand what your suppliers are doing. And as a supplier, you need to know what you need to provide to your, um, your customer to make them compliant and to make them viable and to make them resilient and sustainable. This is a very important relationship dynamic that is happening today that, you know, again, really is, is relatively new to the landscape. If we think about challenges, I talked a little bit about this, um, so I won't spend a lot of time, but really, um, if you think about our enterprise organizations today, they're entering a, a new world. They're being tasked with uh, accountabilities around delivering ESG objectives for 2030 or 2035 or 2040. Um, they're being tasked with corporate responsibility goals, diversity goals. This is not something that your typical peer, peer, procurement organization historically has dealt with. Um, and so they're being challenged in ways they didn't expect to be challenged and probably not consistent with their core competency as part of their you know, kind of career. And so now um, they're facing new challenges and we're helping through our technology base, we're helping them address those challenges. Um, it's very fractionally spread today. Um, the, the, the responsibility for risk in most enterprises doesn't exist with one entity. Uh, it could be spread depending on the nature of the organization. Um, and that makes it a very tricky situation to manage. And so what our, our platform does is really tries to bring those organizations together so they see one common version of the truth as it relates to the, to, um, the enterprise's relationships with their suppliers, right? So what customers really want is they want that data integrated, right? They want their supplier management integrated. Uh, we deal with customers all the time that have a back office filled with uh, a whole, uh, applications. One customer we're dealing with right now has 88 ERP systems, 88. Uh, I can't imagine managing that. Uh, we're using our, they're using our platform to try to bring together the data sets from those 88 platforms into one common um, supplier base. Um, and and one's, you know, kind of one, that one single version of the truth for all of their suppliers. Um, and then the, the issue exists on the supplier side as well. Suppliers are inundated every day, daily, with new requests from their customers. Provide me, you know, an ESG. Uh, what's your carbon emission look like? How is your, what's your diversity status? Uh, what's your financial health look like? Are you tax registered? Is, are you, what's your, your insurance levels? All of these questions are you know, bombarding suppliers today. And that's an, an, an administrative burden that, you know, they're, that drives costs to them. And then of course those costs are gonna be passed on in their, in, the pro, in, a, in, in their goods and services back to the enterprise, which 
drives it to the consumer base and it's it's an economic jungle that um, that we're trying to alleviate some of that pain through the value we provide um, to reduce administrative burden and and make it a, a more seamless relationship between all of those parties. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question back on the previous chart? Of course. Uh, customers want integration of their risk data and supplier management tools. Are there any standards at all on this? Or is really, you're kind of, and that, or maybe that's part of the problem here and you guys can kind of become the de facto standard. Well, we'd love to become the de facto standards. I, you know, I think if, I used to say there were no standards, but I was dead wrong. There's too many standards. <laughs> Right. And so somebody told me once the great thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. Um, and, and so what you you know, what you see is there's standards in the United States there's standards in Germany there's standards in the UK. Um, the EU has data standards across the EU. Um, you know, there's the, there's burgeoning requirements in Australia that or in South Africa. It's all it's global, but it's not there's not one standard globally and, and there's multiple uh, multiple points of concern um, that do need to be managed and standardized. So it is a little bit of the wild west right now uh, because it is so new. And I think, you know, governments and um, industries are struggling with, okay, how do we really standardize this in a meaningful way that's going to be, a, be effective? I think um, th uh, some of this is politically charged. I won't get into any of that, um, but suffice to say, there's probably more standards today than, than ultimately we need. Okay, gotcha. So you're just basically, you're gonna figure out ways to mediate all those different standards in some way, shape or form. In some ways, you know, are we gonna, you know, are we gonna boil the ocean and be able to solve all the world's problems? No, obviously, but what right. we need to do at minimum is to provide a standard way that organizations look at their supplier information, the golden record, if you will, of what is what is the supplier's golden record look like? Um, yeah. What information do you need to make a valued judgment around the supplier and your ability to do business with them, right? Because it's a concern. You don't want to bring on a supplier that's going to have you in, in tomorrow's news. Um, there was just a, uh, I think, a $2 billion fine levied by Ireland against Meta, Facebook, um, because of a violation of data rights um, and personal PII, uh, personal information. And so these kinds of things are real, right? So no organization wants to be in that situation. And so um, compliance um, and trustworthiness with your suppliers is really significant. Good, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Gary, Jeff has a question as well. Of course, yeah, For the yeah. discussion, does this apply only to suppliers of physical goods or will this apply to a non-physical goods supplier such as insurance? Yeah, sure. Any supplier, anyone that supplies goods or services. So we have yoga instructors on our platform and we have semiconductor plat um, providers on our platform and everything in between. So um, if you are selling a good or service to an enterprise, uh, our platform will help you and help them uh, administer that partnership. Thank you. Um, so really what I've been talking about really the whole time is disruption, right? We've seen disruption in a whole host of places and that's driven the need for, for a platform like ours, right? So, you know, I talked about a lot of this, you know, I, I you know, so I, I probably haven't mentioned even cyber risk, right? So, um, you know, th these are the kinds of things you can, you can see on the slide here. Um, that organizations are trying to deal with today. Um, you know, the, the one graphic up here is what they call the uh, doomsday uh, glacier, um, which, you know, is in, in the Antarctic seas and could potentially fall into the ocean and, and cause supply chain disruptions because of changing ocean levels, right? So there's things like that that are out there that we aren't even prepared for, right? And so you try to get ahead of that with data and information and our platform tries to bring that to bear. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the evolution here. Um, suffice to say that we're not where we need to be. Um, the future state is about having a supplier digital identity based in blockchain um, with trusted supplier credentials that is portable and consumable um, you know, by any kind of back office platform. We're not there yet. We're probably somewhere between um, the, the, the web portal that's been around probably for 20 years now and, and supplier networks like ourselves but we still have some distance to go. Uh, we're not doing things on handshakes anymore, or at least most of us aren't. Um, and you know, we're still seeing a little bit of email and spreadsheeting 
uh, unfortunately, but you know, our journey is to create a true identity so that you as a supplier or maybe you as an individual can own um, in, 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 in a way that uh, a, a, an identity that you can then um, share with others at your discretion. Uh, and then organizations uh, and people can make immediate decisions about your credentials and how and when and if they want to do business with you. Um, so how do we build this identity? Um, well, it's it's multifaceted. Um, there's firmographics, things like what business are you in, where are you located, um, where do you produce your goods and services, things of that nature. Um, what ecosystems do you work with? Um, whether it be internal ecosystems like your ERP or P2P systems or external ecosystems that you might um, be involved in from an industry or a, um, a, a, a government perspective, a regulatory perspective. Um, what cloud solutions do you use? Do you use S4 HANA? Do you use AWS? Um, what's your mobile strategy, et cetera, et cetera, right? So our aim again is to build an identity that's based um, on our platform that can be consumed by any of these platforms or any of these, these solutions. Um, and that, in, that information will be, you know, again, easily consumable and, and, and resolvable so that organizations really can um, uh, understand who's adhering to the rules and standards and really bring that efficiency by, by you know, providing information that's uh, current and accurate and immediate. Today, none of those things are really true in the industry. It takes days, weeks, and months to get the right information. Uh, it takes um, a, lot, a lot of human intervention to evaluate that information. And uh, unfortunately, there's just really no way to determine um, effectively if that information is accurate. So that's part of our aim is to address those challenges, right? Um, this is a quick snapshot of what we have available today. So um, a lot of this technology is already built. Um, we have full identity attributes built into our platform uh, that the supplier currently owns and self-manages, right? So that's sovereign. Um, we have uh, third-party content from the likes of the Dun & Bradstreet's and Moody's of the world that verify some of that information. And we're bringing on other authoritative third parties all the time that help us do that. Um, we send out questionnaires that help further clarify information that may not be fully, um, uh, you know, kind of fully um, articulated in, in their identity. So we help fill in the gaps um, with questionnaires that, uh, are, that the, the, the suppliers can respond to and it's immediately updated on our, on our blockchain platform. And then um, um, that, that really lends to the credibility and authenticity of the, of the data. Some of the things on our roadmap is to make that highly portable um, through and, and globally resolvable. Um, and so that's our things that are on a roadmap uh, and we'll have a, a DID identifier that's consumable, uh, both of the microservices and network and networks um, by end of year. So really, again, um, it's about answering questions about trust, right? So organizations wanna know who they're doing business with. Um, are the people I'm doing business with responsible? Are they gonna damage my reputation? Are they acting in a sustainable manner? Um, and can they help me um, address some of my business challenges, reducing my cycle time, uh, reducing my overall risk profile? And most of all, hey, are you at risk? Uh, as, a, as an enterprise doing business with a supplier or a group of suppliers. Um, quite honestly, right now, most organizations simply cannot answer that question. Gary, I'm wondering if any of your current um, clients have shared with you any increased efficiencies, maybe a reduction in the amount of time it takes to screen a potential new supplier or a potential partner or any other benefits that they're already seeing. Absolutely. So um, I don't know if I have the slide in here or not, but we did a we have a use case where we reduced um, cycle time by 82 um, percent and cycle time, meaning the time it takes from first contact with a brand new supplier to the time that they are successfully onboarded. And you could you know, you could take an action such as issuing a purchase order. Right. Um, That's great. Uh, 
other meaningful metrics that we measure are um, uh, the, the ability to continuously monitor um, a supplier's activity. So if a supplier is, you know, has adverse media or their financial health changes or their, you know, maybe their carbon emissions change, um, we, we monitor that and we notify organizations when those changes occur. And as obviously organizations can take the appropriate action. But that is actually a difficult thing to measure because most organizations just couldn't do that before we introduced uh, our platform. Uh, now there's our platform and other platforms that do do this. But um, if you asked a couple of years ago how organizations were monitoring suppliers, you'd probably get a lot of blank stares. Um, Sounds almost like LexisNexis, but without having to go in and do the search. Right, exactly. Yeah, And, and organizations were doing it one time on the way in. Okay, I'm onboarding my supplier. I checked everything out. They look great. Boom. Let's put them on our platform on our with our business and we're going to do business with them. And then, you know, years would go by and nobody would update any of the information. So, you know, we didn't, the enterprise didn't know what that supplier was all about. And then if something happened um, in, in the marketplace or uh, with that supplier, uh, most, most of the time they were dumbfounded because they, they weren't taking, um, you know, the time to monitor and they didn't have the tools to monitor that supplier's activity. So all these things are, you know, what, what would have been, a, a, you know, very much a, a, an innovative, nice to have a couple of years ago are imperative today. It's exciting, thank you. Um, so, you know, uh, when we think about who we sell to today and who, who uses our services, it's procurement, chief procurement officers, CPOs, um, risk and compliance officers. These are relatively new roles in enterprise organizations. Some organizations don't have this role yet. Um, and I mentioned risk being fractured, uh, risk management being fractured um, and ex extended across organizations. Um, that's still uh, true today. Some, some organizations are creating corporate responsibility officers. Some are not. <laughs> so, but uh, if they do exist, uh, they end up being our customers. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a manufacturing supply or organization, typically they have a supply chain or CSCO. Uh, VP that we would sell to or we would market to. Uh, and then, of course, all of the suppliers, any supplier of anything um, are, are, are potential, have a potential opportunity to be part of our network and establish that digital identity I talked about. Uh, we, we source information from three different places. One is directly from the supplier I've discussed. Um, the second one is from these third party um, authenticators, the Dun & Bradstreets, the Moody's of the world, um, and then directly from the buyer themselves. Buyers, enterprises have uh, over the years accumulated um, records of data on their suppliers, probably too many <laughs> records. Um, so part of our role here is to um, take that information, cleanse it, and it becomes a baseline uh, piece of information again it's loaded to our blockchain platform or SaaS application gives organizations line of sight to that and then we can very quickly marry that information um, with supplier provided information and third party information to give organizations a more holistic view of that supplier uh, we can do that via dashboarding we you know have advanced analytics customized scoring uh, workflow capability uh, and that continuous monitoring I talked about so um, it really helps enterprises understand their suppliers um, at a very granular level and dig into where the trouble spots might exist. And then, you know, on, you know, uh, you guys probably know more about this than I do, um, but, um, uh, you know, we are the only supplier network that we're aware of that utilizes any kind of blockchain platform, right? So obviously the, the benefits are many. Um, and, um, this is, you know, one of our core selling points that we use as a differentiator in the marketplace to really talk about how, um, you know, blockchain today provides a platform uh, that is immutable, that does build consensus, et cetera, but it is also future-proofing your organization because we know that there's going to be token economies and there's going to be network of networks and, um, you know, the, the nature of blockchain is going to proliferate as, as we move forward in um, in time and as technology continues to move forward and the blending of you know, blockchain with IoT and, and AI and, and, and generative AI and, and all of these things 
aren't going to, you know, um, require this kind of backbone. And uh, we, you know, we tell our customers all the time, look, you make an investment in TYS, you're not going to be reinvesting two, three years down the line in something that's now based on blockchain because you're already getting it out of the box. We think it's very important for organizations to be ready for that because it's coming, right? Is it coming next year or five years? You know, it depends on the industry and, and where you're located, what kind of business you're in, but it is coming and, and uh, organizations need to be prepared. And we also integrate through more conventional ways. Uh, obviously, um, all of these organizations have ERPs and P2P solutions and, and uh, lots of third-party providers and other outboard platforms in the back office. So through conventional microservice APIs, we connect to all of them very seamlessly. So it makes uh, implementation of our platform very straightforward. Here's just some of our customers. I'm sure you recognize most of these logos. Um, we, we are, we really are agnostic to industry, uh, can work worldwide um, and um, um, you know, find that uh, or global organizations, multinational organizations with the broad basis of suppliers typically are, are you know, kind of find the most valuable with our solution. Uh, and that's really all I have. So guys, um, any questions, comments, criticisms? Uh, so uh, happy, to, happy to answer any questions you might have. Great. You're the first platform that I've that I've heard from that's partnering with organizations like Dun & Bradstreet and Moody's. And so that's a really interesting one. You mentioned being industry agnostic, working with yoga teachers, working with things. I'm wondering, are there any hospitals or medical organizations that are working with you to keep like doctor data so that people can can be aware of any challenges, what's the latest certification experiences of their surgeons or, or other medical providers as well? well? We would love to to venture into that space. It's a complicated one. Um, we've started to dip our toe in that water. It's obviously highly regulated. Uh, and mm -hmm. um, from what I've learned, uh, and I'm no expert, but um, you know, healthcare organizations probably wouldn't be described as on the very tip of innovation. Um, so we've we've struggled quite honestly to, to break the barrier of that particular industry, but we are mindful of it and we think it's in the future, but right now we haven't really had an opportunity. Um, we, do, we are working with a couple of pharma organizations. And so, um, you know, those organizations do, you know, clinical trials and things. So there's a, some similarity there, um, but we're not at the point now where we're carrying any kind of patient data Obviously, there's HIPAA concerns and things of that nature that, that create some complexity. But uh, as as somebody that's um, starting to advance in years and, and I spend more time uh, on my own health record than I probably would like, um, I can appreciate the value of this kind of solution for, uh, for healthcare uh, as we go forward. Mm -hmm. For the pharma trial trialing, I can see a potential use where a lot of companies that are trialing something in a foreign country being better able to document the results of those trials, making it easier for them to apply for FDA approval as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that use case is right on. Um, and yeah. so that's, that's something that, you know, we'll, we'll certainly be on top of as we start to mature the platform around, you know, that industry and, and that use cases. You know, how do we how do we create an environment where it makes it easier for organizations like that to share that information and then make it, you know, um, you, you know, really speed up the process of, you know, approvals and, and bringing, um, you know, bringing those benefits to the public, right, in those, in those countries. And, and Gary, this is uh, Tom, question for you around governance of the of the data. And, you know, if you're putting it on blockchain, I don't know if you're putting it directly on blockchain or if it's a, a hash of data right there, that would be kind of interesting discussion. And who gets to decide what data goes where and who gets access to it? Is that all you guys or are you doing that in conjunction with anybody who joins Trust Your Supplier? Well, it's a, always a partnership. Um, we're constrained by data rights. I'll give you a, a quick example. Um, so PII is not stored on the blockchain, right? Because PII, as you might be aware, it needs to be, um, it, it needs to be uh, 
information that can be deleted at the discretion of the use of the individual, right? So we can't store it on the blockchain for obvious reasons, it's immutable. Um, so we keep that off chain. Um, most of the information is hashed, um, but um, non-PII information by and large resides on the block. And, um, you know, most organizations that we do business with, uh, I think for those that understand blockchain, not all of them do. Um, I think they feel like that's that's the right model, right? So um, as regulations change worldwide, um, you know, and what we can and can't put it in an immutable platform might, you know, might change and evolve. Uh, we'll just continue to roll with that. But right now, you know, our approach is, you know, any information that makes sense to go uh, on blockchain will go on blockchain. And then, you know, any, you know, obviously there's other things that are going to be off block. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not the architect, so I'm probably running out of my level of expertise here. But <laughs> that's that's our fundamental approach. Okay, good. And, and is trust your supplier own the data then once it's in there, or is the customer no. still gets to own it? No, the owner is is the provider, right? So the supply, and in most cases, the supplier um, provides the information, so they they own it. Sovereign to them, they decide whom they can share the information with. Um, so how the system works fundamentally is a, an enterprise would send an invitation uh, to a supplier that says, hey, look, you know, we, we want to do business with you. We're already doing business with you. And we'd like to do so on the trust your supplier platform. Do you agree to share your information? And then the supplier gets to say yes or no. Now, obviously, if they want to keep the business, they're probably going to say yes uh, because they want to get paid. Uh, but that is a choice the supplier has. Other information comes from third parties, like let's say Moody's, they obviously own that data. Yeah. Um, or if, so if the if the enterprise provides the information out of their, say, let's say their vendor master or ERP, obviously they own that. We own no content um, on, on the platform to speak of. Good, so you're facilitating there. And you, uh, there was something in one of the charts, customer risk score. I think when I first heard about you guys way back in probably 2020, <laughs> something like that, uh, the idea was a, I, I'm trying to source some uh, uh, personal protection stuff right from China. I want to know whether this supplier is any good over there. Is a customer risk score kind of your consumer reports view of something, or is it some? Is it the enterprise that signs up looking for it? It's it's their kind of way that they get to build, and you just provide the building stuff. Yeah, it's it's the latter. The enterprise builds their own score. Uh, we've toyed with the uh, concept of a TYS score. We're not, to be honest with you, we're not certain that we want to venture into that that part of the business just yet. But um, yeah. an enterprise that comes on board, they can come up with their, you know, kind of customized scoring algorithm that says, you know, financial health means a three, and ESG means a five, and you know, it totals it all up, and you know. Um, so they can come up with their own mechanism to establish a scoring standards for their suppliers. Good. Thank you. Sure. So Stop. Gary, <clears throat> Gary um, this, is Jeff, this is Jeff Freeman. Wondering, uh, any experience with uh, NFTs um, at all, especially around art? You've been working with many um, art galleries to identify them as a supplier. Um, any, anything in your space yet around NFTs in the art world? No, I haven't run into that yet. We're obviously we're aware of it and we thought about it, but uh, we really haven't run into a customer um, that has that use case today. Um, okay. I'm sure it's coming, right? Um, but um, but at, at this juncture, no, we haven't run into it. And so so under that world, I don't know how much you got your architects or your planners have looked at, but would you then does your site have a capability issue? Uh, tokens or coins in that space then if you get if you go if you go in there it has the capability we've architected for um for a token economy um, okay but the de deploying that solution um to the enterprise is it's fairly challenging N number one enterprises don't understand it um so there's you know there's you know there's a communication and an education that needs to happen Okay. And then, you know, you know, many of these organizations are competitors that are our customers. And so, you know, there has to be a consortium built uh, and that consortium needs to, you know, really understand how they're going to share in that token economy. And it's a very, you know, it's a complex use case. When we started this back in 2018, we thought, okay, we're just going to create this and everybody's going to, you know, kind of cryptographically buy in and that, that didn't happen. 
Um, so I think that although the underpinnings are there, um, the cultural aspects of this are limiting at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. quick question going back to data sharing. You mentioned how the provider owns the data and suppliers will decide who they want to share the data with. Do, is there any level of granularity with, with which they can choose which data to share? So say there's products they no longer, they're no longer marketing, can they remove that from what's being shared and just pick and choose what is relevant for that potential customer? Because we don't have product specific content on the platform today that's mm -hmm. been, a, been a concern. So it's really because it's firmographic, the firmographics are are the base information: who you are, where you're located, you know, what's your you know kind of high level financial picture, et cetera. Those things are it, it's binary, yes or no. Okay. And then um, the, the questionnaire aspect of this, you know, conflict minerals, modern slavery, SCDDA, corporate ethics, company operations, any questionnaires you might send, uh, uh, that the organiz the supplier organization has the discretion as to whether they'd like to respond or not. If they choose to respond, then obviously the, the, the enterprise would have line of sight to that information. And that's how we handle it, that particular issue. Okay. If they choose to, to share that data with one enterprise, is it then in their file so that any future enterprise they share data with automatically gets it? Oh, it doesn't automatically get it. They have to choose to share it. They have to choose, okay. Yeah, Very good. So if they're, let's say they're doing business with IBM and then they're also doing business with Lenovo, they may share a certain questionnaire responses with IBM that they choose not to share with Lenovo. Got it. Well, thank you. Gary, maybe uh, this might be a good summary question uh, wrap up here. What would be the three things that blockchain brings to the table, specifically fabric, if you'd like to go that way, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm brings to the table because you mentioned earlier about hey we're the only one using blockchain so what, what, what would be the three things that come to the table with ty tys yeah that's a good yeah. question so i think number one is what i mentioned before is, is it it creates the platform for you in the future right i mean today it's 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 really more of a SaaS solution uh, to be quite honest but it um, there's there's several competitors we have in the marketplace, but none of them are blockchain. It, trust your supplier and get you ready. So we do have the token economy. We do have some of the things we talked about, you know, when we venture into healthcare and, and maybe this becomes a little bit broader and not just from an enterprise, but also deals with, you know, perhaps individual relationships and, and their, their healthcare records or their educational records, whatever it might be. Um, there's, there's use cases like that. So I think that's number one is that, you know, it's just, it just, this thing is pinned on, on blockchain. I think number two is um, it, it opens, it, obviously it, it gives you a highly secure platform in which to actually store the information. Uh, and many, many of our customers are very gun shy about um, putting information on the cloud still in this, you know, in this day and age. Um, and I think that having, having that information on a blockchain gives them an additional a level of comfort that 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 information is not going to be um, able to be you know hacked or or compromised in any way, um, and then I, I think the the other thing around blockchain is it it just allows organizations to start to have a solution that helps them understand that the, the blockchain use case better. Like what does it do for them? Like where does it play for an enterprise? You know, it's kind of been well chronicled in, in, the, in the kind of, you know, cryptocurrency markets, right? But, you know, enterprises are still really in infancy. It's, a lot of organizations are dabbling in it, uh, probably in a less than effective way, right? using it for what use cases that probably doesn't need to be used for. But this gives them a real world blockchain solution in their portfolio of tools um, that they can start to understand how it works and why, it's, why it adds value. Um, because they're going to have other, they're going to have a logistics platform at some point that's blockchain based, and they're probably going to have, you know, a a a product lineage um, platform that's blockchain based, et cetera, et cetera. IBM already has one of those, right? So, in, in their SCIS platform. So, you know, long story short is I think that that just gives them gives them an opportunity to have have blockchain as part of their back office solution. Good. Thanks. Thanks. 
I just want to, is any, does anyone else have any other questions while we have our speakers for today? Jeff, Andrea, Sean. Nope. Huh? All good. Calvin, Mufadili, April. Well, I'll have all your with Gary. <laughs> I have all the answers, <laughs> not the questions. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I will be sending you more emails later. I hope, I hope April doesn't give me any yes. questions. I wouldn't be able to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I have a question. Are we going to get the slides? The slides yes. Okay. Yes. April's yes, going to I'm share them later. Yes, I'm over Alicia, so you have those now. And Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And I know, Gary, and I have to run to another meeting, but um, this was great. Thank you for having us and for inviting us to discuss. We're very, we're very proud of our solution and feel like it's uh, a very good um, product for you know enterprises and in the supply chain area. It, it sounds like you're really at the forefront of building something like this. The fact that you're partnering with Moody's and Dun and Bradstreet to get that data and to make it all available in one place when enterprises are evaluating new suppliers. Uh, the fact that you're reducing cycle times by 82%, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we think so. And you know, we're starting to see, you know, this is a long journey. Uh, it's taken us much longer to get here than we thought, but I guess that's how business goes some, sometimes. But uh, I think we're starting to see um, this really take hold and, 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 and driving value to organizations. So. Um, we hope that uh, we hope that this shared, you know, some of that journey with you, and you have a better appreciation for what we're trying to do and and what's out there. So, uh, uh, appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you very much. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. I'll let the two of you go. Good luck with your yeah, so things. Unfortunately, we have a conflict, so we're going to leave. But again, thanks to everybody, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. And if everyone else can stay on, we've got a couple of SIG housekeeping uh, yeah. things to look at. And Alicia, maybe we should stop the recording now. Sure, let me do that.